Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iPad OS 13.4. This is the latest version, which adds a lot of cursor functionality and things to the iPads all the way back to the oldest supported iPad. So if you have an iPad Air 2 like this one, you'll get all the same features that you will with the new one, with the exception of some of the new accessories that are available for the newly announced 2020 iPads Pro. Now this particular update came in at 2.84 gigabytes on my iPad Air 2 and is similarly sized on all of the different iPads. Now, if you are on the developer beta or the public beta with iOS or iPad OS 13.4 beta six or GM, you will have the final version already. So there will not be an update for you. You already have it. You just had it a week early. So you can either delete the beta profile or just continue with it installed, but either way you'll already have it. And you can see that by going to the build number. So if we go into settings, then we go to about and tap on the software version, you can see the build number is 17E255. And that means you're on the latest build. Now let's talk about everything new in this video. And if you want to know what's new in iOS 13.4, I'll link those videos as well. And I'll also do a video on watch OS 6.2. All of those were released today and have some significant updates. Now, the first thing that's major with the iPads and goes back to the oldest iPad is new support for mouse and trackpad. Now with the newest 2020 iPads pro, we get a new keyboard with a trackpad and things coming out in May, but this particular device supports it as well. So for example, if you have a magic mouse, a magic mouse Two, magic trackpad or any third party Bluetooth or USB mouse, you have support now. And so this is a magic mouse Two for the Mac pro. And you'll see, I already have a cursor. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you you can see it closer up. Now, in order to pair your magic mouse to or magic trackpad or magic mouse, whatever you have, just go to settings, go to Bluetooth and you'll see magic mouse. It'll show up under devices here and it works just like a normal mouse. So now we have an all new cursor and we can use the gestures and right click. So I can just scroll through using the touchpad on the top and you can adjust these settings in accessibility. So they haven't moved it to its own separate category yet, but you can adjust it here. So for example, we can go to pointer control and we have increased contrast automatically hide pointer after two seconds. You can adjust this, turn that off if you don't want it to hide. And as you can see, I'm moving through, it's actually highlighting things like accessibility. We also can change the color of the pointer. So maybe I want it to be white and change the stroke size as well. The thickness of the line around the pointer. As you see, I move this, it changes it. And then if we go back to pointer control, we can turn off pointer animation. So if we don't want it to have an animation to highlight accessibility, we don't have to have that. And then we have pointer size. So you can see we can change the pointer size. We also have scrolling speed as well. So all of these things are really nice. And then we can go back home. We can bring up the dock. We can go back home. It's a little tricky to get it to work on non face ID iPads, but if we want to go into a different app, you can see it highlight here and it works really well. So you can use not only the magic mouse, but the magic trackpad. So let me show you that as well, because we have some new features with that. So I'll set the iPad air two aside and we'll switch to the iPad pro. Now this is the trackpad to my Mac pro. So if I want to pair it to my iPad pro, I just go to settings and you'll see it says other devices. I'll turn on the trackpad. We'll give it a second. It shows up, tap on magic trackpad and it's paired. So now I have the same cursor. I can swipe up or down with two fingers, swipe with three to go home. We can swipe side to side to go back, swipe up again. And if I bring the cursor down, you can see it highlights things. So if I go in, I've got the same, actual settings under accessibility. So if I go to pointer controls, then go to color, let me change it to blue. So it's a little easier to see and then go back and pointer size. We'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it on the display. So you've got the same exact thing. So now again, if I swipe up with three fingers, you can close that. I can go to the app store and navigate the entire iPad just using the trackpad. So you've got all of those same gestures. And as I highlight over things, you can see that there's a box. I can highlight over the home bar, swipe up. And if I swipe up and hold, I can get all of my multitasking views. So it's really nice to use just with the trackpad. And of course, in things like photos and things, you've got pinched to zoom. So if I go into photos and here's a photo I took from the Mac pro, if I want to zoom in, I can just pinch and zoom in, zoom out, swipe up, go home. So it's really nice. We have all of these things and you have all those multi-touch gestures where you can zoom in and out. You can tap secondary click. So if I want to right click on this, for example, 
two finger click gives me the 3d press menu as well. So you've got all of those features right from a trackpad or a mouse. It's really, really nice. Now, Apple has also added quite a few other things to this as well. Now with iPad OS 13.4, Apple finally added folder sharing with iCloud drive. And so if we go into the files app, we can go to our folder that we want to share. Maybe the platform tools I'll press and hold. Then we go to share and now we can add people so we can add people to share this folder to change files within and control to limit access only to people you explicitly invite or grant access and you can give them a link to share this folder. Also, you can change the permissions for who can make changes, upload or download or view files. So you have full control over who can see these files, modify them and help you work collaboratively. Now the next update is with Memoji. So if that's something that you use with an iMessage, they've updated that and they've updated it with Memoji stickers. There's nine new Memoji stickers, including smiling face with hearts, hands pressed together and party face. So there's a few new ones. If you use these, they're available. It's not anything I really use that much, but they're here if you want to use them. Now they've updated mail as well. And I'll talk about all of the bug fixes and things like that a little bit later on. Mail has a lot of fixes to it, but they've also updated the interface just a little bit. So if we go into mail, there are now always visible controls to delete, move, reply or compose a message in this view. So you can see we can reply here and we've got our different options for things like flag and mark as unread or move messages. And then we have delete folder and compose in the upper right. Now this is more of a big deal on the iPhone than it is on the iPad since the iPhone sort of limited it to two different things. Now they're just all visible all the time. So that's been updated. They've also updated it if you use S mime for encryption. So if you use that, you can now reply and it will automatically automatically encrypt any emails that are sent when you have that configured, but you will need to have that on the server side configured. So everything's encrypted. Now they've also updated the app store and within the app store, a developer now has the option to give you universal purchase support. So what that means is maybe you purchase an application such as procreate. They can allow you to have that on your iPhone, iPad, iPod touch or Mac or Apple TV all for free. And this applies to Apple Arcade as well as any app throughout. So now you can just have that on all of your devices for one fee if the developer chooses to do that. Of course, sometimes they're very different, so you don't want to necessarily do that for all apps, but the option is there. They've also updated it so that recently played arcade games will now carry across different devices. So maybe you start this new game spider on say an iPad and you want to continue on your iPhone. You should be able to do that across Mac and Apple TV as well. So all of those things should be here. And then there's some new list views to show all of your games and things like that. So you'll have those options and they've just updated it to make it a little bit easier to see your games or different categories and things along those lines. So. So nice little changes, nothing major. Now there's additional controls if you're using the keyboard within photos to switch between different tabs. So if you hold command, you can see those and some of the controls were there before, but they've added additional ones. So for example, if I hold control and hit one, I can switch to this tab. I can go back to my favorites by holding control and hitting three. So we have the ability to just switch between different tabs very simply again, control one, three, and then switch between with shortcuts. Now they've also added a small change in the TV app where we now have family sharing. And so if you have family sharing set up with different family members, you now have that available so they can see all of your purchases. You can see theirs and share TV and movies. They've also added some settings for TV as well. So if we go into settings and then we go down to TV, let's find that under TV, we now have download options for Wi-Fi or cellular. If you have a cellular iPad to allow for high quality or fast downloads. So it just depends on your internet connection, what you have. And the same is true for streaming options with data saver or high quality. And then there's additional options down here as well. So all of these things are really nice that they've added and we have those options. Now there's also an option in shortcuts. So if you use shortcuts, for example, we now have the option to create a shortcut and Shazam it. So we can tap an icon to Shazam that and listen to the music around and determine what's playing. Now you could use Siri to do that before, but they've added it in this. And then finally they've added AR quick look support for audio playback. So if you're using augmented reality, it's not something I use a whole lot, but if you're using augmented reality, maybe to look at furniture around or things like that, they've added quick look support for audio playback in the file itself, the USDZ file. 
Now with the keyboard, they've added a couple things and I'll just run through those pretty quickly. But if we go into notes, you'll see the keyboard here. They've added an on-screen keyboard layout for the 12.9 iPad pro that now matches the smart keyboard. So if you have a smart keyboard, you can now match it. So for example, here's a smart keyboard with it and you can now match the exact same layout. They've also updated Swiss German keyboard layouts for the iPad pro 12.9. They've added predictive text or typing support for Arabic. So if you're using an Arabic keyboard, you'll have that. And then they've added live conversations for Japanese. And I apologize. I don't know how to say this other language here, but it automatically transforms into the correct characters without pressing the space bar to convert text or select candidates. And so if someone knows how to say that Zian or Zuyan, I could look it up, but if someone knows how to say that, please let me know in the comments below. Now, aside from that, there are a ton of bug fixes. And so I'll run down those bug fixes one by one. And there's a lot to cover here, but I'll go quickly through them. So the first thing is it fixes an issue in the camera where the viewfinder may not show up when you open the camera. So if you open the camera, it could show a blank screen that's now fixed. So thankfully they've fixed that. They've also addressed an issue in photos where it may appear to use excessive storage. So I saw that on my iPhones, they've fixed that now. They've also resolved an issue in photos that may prevent sharing an image to messages if you have iMessaging disabled. So if you're not using iMessage, it will now work properly. They've also fixed an issue in mail, thankfully, where messages may appear out of order. They've fixed an issue in mail where conversation lists may display empty rows. They've also fixed an issue in mail when tapping the share button in quick look, it could crash. So maybe you're trying to share something here. It could crash. They've updated that as well within the app. And then they've updated an issue in settings where if you go to cellular data, now this is not a cellular iPad, but it may show the data as off, even though it was turned on, they've fixed that. They've also fixed an issue in Safari where web pages may not be inverted if you're using both dark mode and smart invert together. And yes, you can use them together. And if you were, that problem has been fixed. They've also fixed an issue in Safari if you're using captcha tiles to maybe verify your human, they may display incorrectly. That should now be fixed if you're on a website that uses CAPTCHA to verify that. They've fixed a couple issues in Reminders as well. So if you use the stock or standard Reminders app, it addresses an issue where Reminders may not issue new notifications for an overdue recurring reminder until it's marked as completed. They also fixed an issue where Reminders may send notifications for completed Reminders. They've fixed an issue with iCloud Drive as well, where it may appear to be available even if you have it signed out when you're in pages, numbers, and keynotes. So it will no longer be available if you're not using it, of course. Also fixes an issue in music where if you're watching music videos and things like that, they were lower quality. They've fixed it so it may show in high quality now. And then they've also fixed an issue in the home app. So if you use the home app and you have security cameras set up with it, and I currently don't, but if you have security cameras and maybe you receive a notification that someone's walking in your yard or something like that, you tap on the notification, it may open the wrong camera. Maybe it shows the backyard instead of the front yard. That has now been resolved. They've also fixed an issue where if you take a screenshot and then you share the screenshot, the shortcuts menu may not appear. They've fixed that as well. And then finally, they've fixed an issue that improves the Burmese keyboard. So punctuation symbols are now accessible from numbers and symbols. So all of these things have been fixed and probably a lot of other things as well. And if you're on iOS, they've fixed some things with CarPlay. Now, all of those things have fix, been fixed, and I would have to say that after using iOS 13.4 betas for a while, this is by far the best and most stable version of iOS 13 I've seen so far. That's based on a lot of feedback I've heard as well. So battery life and things like that seem to be greatly improved if you're on the previous version of iOS 13.3.1. And so over the last 10 days, I use my iPad mostly as consumption for things like YouTube, but you'll see three hours and 56 minutes of screen on time with a little over 50% of my battery usage. And the screen time is hard to say what it really is because I use this sporadically and I don't charge it for many days in a row, but 10 hours of battery life is not unrealistic on this iPad. And if you have an iPad air two, you can expect it to be nice and fast. So for example, the iPad air two, everything seems to be nice and fast and I would not expect a whole lot of slowdowns. It does take a little bit to load, but that's the first time I've opened mail on here. And then of course you have mouse support on all of these devices, which is really, really nice. So I think it adds a whole level of 
functionality we didn't have before. And I highly recommend updating to this version, unless you want to stay on an older version for maybe modifying it in other ways. So that's really it for this particular update, but let me know how your experience is in the comments below and be sure to check out my other videos of iOS 13.4 and watch OS 6.2. I'd love to hear what you think of those in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.